the Johnson Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's self polishing Glow Coat present Silver McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. an interesting letter from a woman who proposed a use for Johnson's Wax, which she thought might belong in our Department of Unusual Uses. It had to do with protecting and improving the looks of porch floors and woodwork now that spring is here and porches are coming into use again in so many parts of the country. Well, this use for Johnson's Wax really isn't unusual, but it's a good idea, especially now that homes throughout the land are getting their spring house cleaning. Clean your porch floors now, and then spread on a coat or two of Johnson's Paste or Liquid Wax. Wax the woodwork, too. You'll be giving the finish, whether paint or varnish, honest-to-goodness protection against dirt and the rains that blow through your porch screens. And you'll make future cleaning easy, because the extra dirt and dust that accumulates on porches is easy to wipe off Johnson Waxed floors and woodwork. One thing about being an average citizen, it's the exciting things that happen to balance the dull things that makes you average. Like what is happening right now to Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly, Molly. Something awful has happened. Now, take it easy, McGee. Well, she was. Whatever it is, in 20 or 30 years, you'll look back at it and laugh. Yeah. I'll be looking back at it through the bars of a jail. That's where I'll be looking back at it through the... <laughs> My gosh, I'm in an awful mess, Molly. Oh, McGee, you get into more stews than a restaurant oyster. <laughs> All right, tell Mother. Well, look, I stole a car. You what? Well, I didn't exactly steal it, exactly. I just borrowed now, it. Now, wait a minute, dearie. This isn't like you. Well... I've known you to sneak a peek at the discard playing gin rummy and give yourself a slight edge in your income tax, but I've never known you to steal. Wasn't exactly stealing. You see, I had to get downtown in a hurry, see? What for? Well, they got a new punch board at the cigar store, and the first prize is a swell big ashtray showing Roosevelt and Churchill shaking hands, and it says underneath, put it there. <laughs> I know I could have won it if I'd have gotten Now, there. never mind that. Whose car was it? Old Lady Uppington's. Oh, dear. She told me I could borrow it sometime in an emergency, and this was an emergency. On account of you don't often see a swell ashtray like that with two Yeah, people. but uh, what's all the excitement? You brought the car back, didn't you? No. Why not? Because somebody stole it from in front of the cigar store. They stole... Oh, heavenly days, you are in a mess, well... dearie. Did you report it to the police? Sure I did, over the phone. And they said, what's the license number? And I says, I don't know. And they says, who are you? And I didn't want to embarrass Uppy, so I says, I was Morton J. Muffin of Kokomo, Indiana. <laughs> and I described the car to him and hung up quick. And then I run home. Well, then why didn't you give your right name? I couldn't think of it. <laughs> well, there's only one thing for you to do, did he? Call Abigail and explain the whole thing. Oh, I was afraid you'd say that. She'll pin my ears back so far back I can hear the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> Nevertheless, you have to do it. I'm sure she'll be reasonable. Reasonable, my clavicle. That old rhino has got a tongue sharp enough to shave with. She'll be about as reasonable as a hornet in a hairnet. But hand me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Maine, 7926143279. Thanks. She ain't home, Molly. The operator rang and rang and nobody answered. <laughs> 
You didn't give her much time. You're afraid she would answer. Uh oh, it's the cops. They traced me. They tracked me down. They dragged out the thrownet. Oh, it's throw out the dragnet and don't get so excited. I peeked out and it's a woman. Oh, well, thank goodness. Whatever she's selling, I'll buy a dozen. You'll be buying Abigail's automobile for the next hundred years, so don't get liberal. Come in. Mr. McGee. You betcha, sis. What magazines you selling? <laughs> You're a little old to be working your way through college, but a gray-haired co-ed is better than a platinum dumbbell, I always say. <laughs> So I'll be glad to subscribe to whatever... Mr. It is. McGee, I am a bailiff. Well, that's great, sis. It's a fine thing when... You're a what? She's a bailiff, McGee. A bailiff. Meaning the police want you. Mm. Serve your papers, dearie. This isn't official, Mrs. McGee, oh. but they would like to have Mr. McGee drop in at the police station as soon as convenient. Thank you. Boy, this looks bad. You see how polite she was? They would like to have me drop in at the police station. <laughs> hmm. And when I do, they'll wham the junior out of me with a rubber hose. Well, after all, they could have sent a squad car after you. They're giving you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, yeah. Those guys wouldn't give you the happiest off an old corpus. <laughs> I'll bet they want me to make a break for it so when I come running out, they can shoot me down like a dog. Don't be so gangbusterish. You haven't committed any crimes. Is that so? I gave the cops the wrong name, didn't you I? You weren't under oath. Oh, wasn't I? You should have heard them. <laughs> well, come on, McGee. Huh? Where? To the police station. Huh? Might as well get it over with. Oh, no, you don't. I ain't walking into no trap. I got to get me some character references. I got to get a lawyer. Do you know any lawyers? Sure I do. A friend of mine in the Elks. Old Oliver Pross. We call him Nolly Pross. <laughs> come on, let's go see All him. All right, I'll run up and put my face on. I'll be right down. We'll get going. <sighs> Ah, there's a good kid, sticking by me through thick and thin. I'll bet if they send me to prison... Ah, oh, they can't send me to prison for borrowing a car. Oh, no, boy, they can throw the book at you for that. <laughs> well, I didn't steal it. Yeah, but can you prove you didn't steal it? I don't have to prove it. All I done was to... Oh, my gosh, they got me. Well, I'll go quietly. Car stealing is bad enough without beating up a couple of cops. Come in. <laughs> Hi, mister. Hmm. What you sticking your hands out for? Oh, I, I thought I was going to be... Oh, hi, sis. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. <laughs> see, are you? I sure am. Why? Huh? Hmm? Why what? Why are you glad to see me? Do you hardly ever, almost never are. Well, it's, it's just sheer relief, sis, old sis. <laughs> I was expecting some very unpleasant visitors. <laughs> Well, you're nothing to be cast away on a desert island with. You're a darn sight better than a couple of harness bulls. Gee, are you getting some harness bulls, mister? On the contrary, sis. On the contrary. Mm -hmm. Look, sis, I, I guess you better run along now. I, I don't want to be on spa hospital. On, in hot, that is, I, I don't want to be an old nasty, but, well, you... I, I, I got to be alone. I want to be alone with my thoughts. Oh, uh, look, mister. Yeah? We've been friends a long time, haven't we? Uh -huh. Certainly seems like a long time. <laughs> Gotta admit that. You got something on your mind, I know. Huh? Some secret sorrow, knowing at your heart like an evil serpent. <laughs> huh? I know you don't like to burden others with your sorrows. You don't like to lean the weight of your sorrows upon others' shoulders. You're the strong, silent type. Who, me? What good is a friend if not to share your sorrows? Hmm. To lighten your burden as we struggle down life's road together. <laughs> Why don't you open your heart and pour out your trouble to a woman? <laughs> a woman whose understanding heart will help you bear your lonely load. Come on, what's the matter? Hmm... Well, gee, sis. <laughs> well, that's awful nice. I... Yeah, that's from a radio program I heard last night. It's called The Bleeding Heart. <laughs> well, that's a mighty pretty hunk of sentiment, sis. I... Yeah, but it's a lot of malarkey. Huh? Huh? Yeah, if anybody gave me that baloney when I was in a jam, I'd flap and silly. Well, that's a fine idea. Oh, I think... no, you don't. I'm getting out of here. <laughs>
Nolly, old man, I didn't really steal the car. I had permission to use it. Now, where do I stand with the cops now? Yes, uh, Mr. Cross, we've got to say the right thing at the police station, yeah. you know. Well, as I see it, the crime, if it was a crime, and there will be extenuating circumstances to it. The fact that you had permission to use the vehicle and that you reported the theft, even though you used a fictitious name, <laughs> though in the case, <laughs> the case of Crampton versus Janovic, Nebraska, 1907, Court held that subsequent actions of defendant were, per se, incompatible with motivation of original act. And therefore, under the law was cited by Justice Handeshag, Virginia Statute, 1911-1912, bona fide malfeasance was indicated by a cause of sine qua non. You see what I mean? In words of one syllable, no. Me either, Nolly. You gonna handle my case or not? My friend, you're hotter than a dime store frying pan, and I wouldn't touch this case with the mass of the Mayflower. Is that clear? It is. And thank you, Mr. Frost, for your trouble. And if there's anything we can ever do for you, just ask it. Yeah, and we'll sock you right in the puss. <laughs> Come on, Molly. Well, he was a big help. You got any more big-hearted friends that will rush to your defense, dearie? Hey, I got to do something quick. What I need is some character witnesses. Might be smart to leave your character out of this, sweetheart. <laughs> if Mr. Pross was too scared to handle the case, you must be halfway to the hot seat right now. Oh, that's silly. I haven't done anything. Gee whiz, they can't treat me just well, like... Well, hello there, kids. What you doing in this building? Oh, we had to consult a lawyer, Mr. Oldtimer. <laughs> oh, kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. Huh? Patch up your troubles and make the best of it. Look, daughter, maybe Johnny here is kind of impulsive and is always putting his best foot in his mouth. <laughs> so what? And Johnny... What are you talking about? Oh, you two kids seen a lawyer when you've been so happy together. Why, Jiminy? Don't you know that marriage is a wonderful thing and nobody... Say, ever... who's talking about marriage? We had to see a lawyer about stealing uh, somebody stealing a car. Yeah. Oh, I see. Thought for a minute you and Johnny were... Uh, and it wouldn't be a bad idea either. How you ever managed to get along day after day with that little squirt, bragging and shooting off his bazoo? Why, it's a shame. You get trot back in there, daughter, and file papers. Oh, cut it out. I got no time for kidding, old-timer. Look, how'd you like to be a character witness? For who? For McGee. <laughs> Johnny, I do it just for the fun of it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of characters in my day, but by ginger, you taught them all. <laughs> Wait till I talk to him. Is he a character, I'll say? No, no, I... no, no. All I need is somebody to vouch for me with the cops. Tell him I'm a good citizen. Yeah. Mm. Tell him he wouldn't steal. Mm. Tell him I'm upright and honest. Oh. Tell him he's straightforward. And truthful. Now, now, wait a minute, Johnny. Don't reach. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I can't make it today. You'll have to get somebody else. I see. I always heard that a man's best friends were dogs, and they're certainly acting like it. Okay, old-timer, but don't ever ask me any favors. No, no, kids, don't be like that. I'd do it if I could. I'd go with you in a minute, except... Except what? Except that in a minute I got an appointment with another feller. Yeah. Well, good luck, Johnny. Remember, if they hang you, you got a legal right to a chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that old vinegar lip. Well, it just goes to show you, dearie. Friendship is just relative. What do you mean? I mean, you can only depend on your relatives for friendship. Uh, this don't mean anything. Nobody's turned me down except an old group that don't know his left foot from a hot rock and a two-bit lawyer that only passed the bar because nobody'd buy him a drink. <laughs> I'll find somebody to help me. Well, I hope so. Your circle of friends is narrowing down so it looks like a wheel off a roller skate. Yeah. Who can you get? Well, now, let me see. Who could I get? Hey, how about Billy Mills? Nah, he's sore at me. What for? Well, I showed him a song I wrote, which the name of it was, My Sister's Got a Date with a Bombardier, So Take a Run Around the Block, Buster. <laughs> Billy said it was lo said, it said it was no good. 
I says, what do you know about music? And he said, why don't I grow up? And I says, after seeing what it did to him, I didn't want to. And he said, I'd be a corny comedian if I was a comedian. And one word led to another. And well, hello there, folks. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Just the guy I wanted to see, Junior. What's on your mind, pal? To give you the benefit of a widespread doubt... Well, he's got trouble, Mr. Wilson. No kidding, Junior. I'm in a hot spot. I'm practically a fidgety from judgment right now. Yeah? <laughs> well, elucidate, chum. Right, huh? Explain it to him, dearie. Oh, well, look, Junior. I'll state the case hyper hypermedically. Now, suppose you borrowed somebody's car, see? Yes. And maybe you marked it, uh, parked it someplace with the motor running. And while you were in a cigar store working on a punch board to win a swell big ashtray that, believe me, I really need. <laughs> and while you were in there, somebody copped the jalopy. You mean to tell me you borrowed somebody's car and then somebody stole it? Whose car was it? Abigail Loppington. Oh, brother. Why, pal, I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the T-bones in Texas. <laughs> she doesn't think any more of that limousine than I do of my right eye. That's my good eye, too. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a pretty fancy car, all right. Why, well, I say everything she owns is fancy. She even uses monogrammed mothballs. <laughs> What do I do? What do I do? I got a notice to appear at the police station. You want my advice? Oh, indeed we do, Mr. Wilcox. What do you think I've been telling you all this for? Just to ruin your mascara? <laughs> well, what you need, my friend, is a couple of good character witnesses. Ha-ha, now we're getting something. Uh, I knew I could depend on you, Junior. Where would a guy be without his friends? Well, there's nothing like a good character witness. The more the better. Take Johnson's wax, for instance. Ah, friendship is a beautiful thing. Why, there are thousands of witnesses to the high character of Johnson's Wax. Friendship. And they'd all testify to its time and labor-saving character, to its dependability and quality. Friendship. What a grand old word. Why, when a product has character and quality like Johnson's Wax, it never has to worry about friends to recommend it. Friendship. They all know that Johnson's Wax is the finest thing in the world to protect and preserve floors and furniture and woodwork and enamel surfaces against dust, dampness. Friendship. <laughs> Ah, let me sit by the side of the road in a house and be friendly. <laughs> Say, can you go to the police station with us right now, Mr. Wilcox? Who, me? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have a very important appointment. Sorry, pal, but you'll find somebody, though. So long, now. <laughs> How do you do it, dearie? Do what? Inspire such unselfish devotion and loyalty in your friends. They all leap to your aid like a bunch of cast iron deer. Yeah. <laughs> like a fleet of ships deserting a sinking raft. <laughs> Stop it now. You can't talk to you about you like that. Well, I'm glad I got one friend, even if it is only my wife. And hey... I know who will vouch for me. Doc Gamble. His office is right down the hall here. That's a wonderful idea, McGee. And I paid his bill only yesterday. Fine. Come on. Hello, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Doctor. Hi, Doc. Now, look. Make it snappy, McGee. I've got to go out on a call. Mrs. Toops' little boy just swallowed a nickel. Well, maybe he'll get the wrong number and get it back. <laughs> now, look, Doc. McGee's in a jam, Doctor. What's abnormal about that? First time I see him when he's not in trouble, I'll go see a doctor. <laughs> but look, Doc, I gotta go to the police station and clear myself, see? They dragged out the throw net. Thrown out the drag net. <laughs> They're after me. And I need a couple of character witnesses, see? How about it, Doc? Will you witness my character? Take off your shirt, McGee. <laughs> <laughs> there you go again. Take off your shirt. Let's go swimming sometime, Doc. I gotta take my shirt off every time I see you anyway. <laughs> Why does he have to take off his shirt to get you as a character witness, Doctor? Oh, it has nothing to do with that, Mrs. McGee. I want to listen to his heart. He's too excited. I am not excited. I just got a police from the call, and if I don't throw him in jail, they'll show up. I mean, they think I'm crime of a guilty, and I got to prove down there, and I'll go I'm not. Not right now. <laughs> oh. No. He's not excited. McGee, if you don't learn to calm down and take things easier, you're going to fall right on your face, which will probably improve it. Ah, forget my face, will you? It would make me very happy. Look, Doctor, this is really serious. McGee's got to have somebody to tell the police that he's a reputable citizen. Yeah, come on, Doc. Gee whiz. If a guy can't depend on his family physician, who can a guy depend on? Well, I'm sorry, McGee, but look at this list. Huh? I've got to see a small boy about removing a nickel. Yeah. I've got to see a man about getting his thumb out of a bowling ball. I've got to see a woman airplane spotter who thinks she sees a stalk coming. I have to 
visit a young man who wants some advice about getting married and won't take it when I give it to him. I gotta waste a perfectly good afternoon seeing a dozen assorted darn fools about imaginary ailments, and now you come along and want me to go with you to the police and tell him you're good to your mother. Tell him yourself. I'm busy. Good day. <laughs> McGee. Huh? Take off your shirt. Huh? I want to cry in it. <laughs> the King's Men sing coming in on a wing and a prayer. One of our planes was missing two hours overdue. One of our planes was missing with all its gallant crew. The radio sets were humming, we waited for a word, then a voice broke through the humming, and this is what we heard. Coming in on a wing and a prayer, coming in on a wing and a prayer, so there's one more gone, we can still carry on, coming in on McGee. Come on, let's get it over with. Wait a minute, I want to get my story straight in my mind. So you see, Captain, I am perfectly innocent. I had permission to use the car, and the only reason I didn't give my right name when I called up was I fell in a coal hole and everything went black. <laughs> and that's why... Okay, Molly, I got it. Come on. Hi, officer. Can I speak to you a minute? Well, why not? Why not? I'm a public servant, and with servants so hard to get, the public doesn't deserve me. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, No, What is it, No, What is it? Well, he wants to explain about a stolen car, Captain. Not a captain I am, a cushion. I'm only a sergeant. Go entirely to politics. <laughs> come, come, now. What is it? What is it? What is it? Look, Sarge, I'm Fibber McGee, 79 Whistle Vista. Wait a minute, now. Clancy. Yes, Sarge. Uh, take this down in longhand. I can take it down in shorthand. I said take it down in longhand, you are done. With longhand, one of us can read it. <laughs> now go ahead, me bio. Uh, let me tell this, McGee. Oh, okay. Look, Captain. Sergeant. Well, <laughs> you ought to be a captain. And who knows it better than me unless it's you, McCushla? Well, get on with it, my morning. Well, in the first place... Be I... quiet, you... Go on, lady. Well, my husband here borrowed the lady's automobile. Clancy, sir. Take her feet off the desk. This woman is a lady. Uh, mm, yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead now, Alana. Well, it all started when I... Hey, soon. Okay. <laughs> Look, my husband borrowed a car from a friend, with permission, of course. I see. I thought of it. And he parked it downtown, and whilst he was in a store, somebody stole it. I understand the person's word, <laughs> He reported it to the police. I see. And I know who, who, who was the legal owner of the said vehicle now? Mrs. Abigail Uppington. Uppington, is it? Aha! Clancy! Yes, sir? Bring in the thief we caught driving the stolen vehicle. Yes, sir. Are those tickets for the police picnic I see on the desk there, Sergeant? <laughs> McGee, buy a ticket from the sergeant. Huh? Why should I buy... Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, yeah. How much are they, Sarge? A bag of coffee, my boy, oh. And you'll understand you're under no compulsion to buy a single one of them at all, all. You'll be, uh, wanting ten, no doubt. <clears throat> Twelve. Twelve? Yes, twelve. Well, you better make it fifteen. Here you are, Sarge. Fifteen bucks. Well, thank you very much. You're a fine public third citizen, you are. We are. Here she is, Doc. She was driving the stolen car when Fitzpatrick and Goldberg picked her up. Why, this is an outrage. I demand to see a lawyer immediately. Abigail. Abigail. Oh, Mr. McGee, will you tell this, this public detriment exactly who I am? Well, uh, this is Mrs. Uppington, Captain. Uh, the owner of the car my husband borrowed. <gasps> Your husband borrowed that? Oh, so it was Mr. McGee who took my car and left it outside the cigar store with a motor running. Yeah, but look, Uppy, you told me I could take it sometime in an emergency, mm-hmm. and there was a swell big ashtray with Roosevelt and Churchill shaking hands. Thank and uh, Let go of the lady's arm. What's the matter with you? Don't you recognize the rights of a citizen in a taxpayer? No, apologize. The lady, the apologies of the police department. Uh, thank you. And now, Mr. McGee... Well, McGee, no, Abigail, well, McGee was merely only trying to... Be quiet! Quiet, all of you! Quiet! Oh. Right from the out of my mind. Lady, you can go. I'm sorry for the mistake. Thank you. I realize that you were only doing your duty, officer. But when my legal advisor gets through with this man here, this Mr. McGee, he will be lucky to own the shoestring he started on. <laughs> Well, I guess that's all cleared up. Well, much obliged, Sarge. Yes, thank you very much. But uh, what I want to know is, uh, how did you ever trace my husband? Yeah, I gave the name of Morton Muffin when I reported the car stolen. Well, if you want to know the truth, we didn't trace him. Yeah, but a bailiff came to my door and said to me... He's been going to all the doors, asking people to drop in and buy tickets to the police picnic. Oh. (laughs) Well, we've done that, too, so everything's taken care of. Come on, McGee. Now, so long, Sarge, and thanks for... Not so fast, you. Not so fast. Fancy, sir. Ah. Hold this man for driving without a license. Huh? Parking in old parking zone. Huh? Leaving his motor running way past. No. Giving a false name to the police. No. Lock him up! <laughs> I mentioned Johnson's Belt Polishing Glow Coat on this program, nearly every one of you will immediately think of your linoleum floors. And that's not merely because I have told you many times that Glow Coat is self-polishing, needs no rubbing or buffing, and besides saving you hours of work, also saves your linoleum by making it last longer. It's really because so many of you by now have tried Glow Coat and found these things out for yourselves. You know how easy Glow Coat is to apply, how quickly you can wipe up spilled things from a glow coated floor. It's a great convenience to have Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your shelf in times like these, when you want to take extra good care of your floor surfaces and still save time to devote to essential war activities. Hey, Molly, what'd you tell that cop to let me out of jail? Gee, he shook hands with me and everything. <laughs> you know, it was a funny thing about that, McGee. Huh? We found we were distant relatives. Oh. Sure. His mother was an O'Brien, and, you know, that was my maiden name. It was not. Your maiden name was Driscoll. Well, if you can give the wrong name to get into jail, I guess I can do the same to get you out. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> The character of the old-timer heard on this program was played by Bill Thompson. This is Arnold Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wright's Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Tonight, this program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.